and here we go. We are the uh, we are June eighteenth. It is currently twelve twenty-two Eastern uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and my name is Calior, and I'm gonna be here to talk about Blood Hunt news because apparently. People just like to retweet the Blood Hunt Twitter and say that's it in terms of news, but no, there's much more than that. There's much more than that, there's much more to talk about, there's much more to analyze, and I'm going to try to keep it within an hour. We're going to be talking about a lot of things today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the next big patch incoming, we're going to be talking about some stuff that happened during the week. Uh, t things in terms of the store, the big change in terms of uh, the, the how they're rotating modes now inside the game, and the reasons behind it. Uh, we're going to be talking about events that are current that will happen and are currently happening even today at the time of recording this. Um, we're going to talk about all the explanations that they gave, like moving forward in terms of all their decisions. Uh, a little, a little like behind-the-scenes view of what's happening. Uh, we're gonna be talking about new, uh, new things, reminders of a few things, uh, and maybe we're gonna go into uh, some season two talk. Uh, some, 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 a few observations, but it's time to start thinking about season two or start getting answers about what's going to ha be happening for Season 2, it, both in a story sense and both in a technical sense. So we are going to go right into it right now. So, uh, of course, this is all based on info that I got online, uh, on interacting with some people, uh, and also like a bunch of... Um, how can you say, like, not exactly speculation, but in terms of understanding and knowing how the gaming scene works and a bit of how game development works uh, in the background. Uh, just give me one thing to check. Doop, doop, doop. Okay. Good. I want to get this out. Perfect. Okay. So, as usual, I'll be putting the links in the chat if you want to uh, look at what I'm saying, if you want to save this, because I'm not pulling that out of my... out of the nether, out of nowhere. Uh, so, what we're currently seeing here, uh, this is a reminder from David, the producer of... Uh, uh, the director of, Sh of uh, Blood Hunt, saying that we are going nowhere. Updates at uh, are the core point right now, especially fixing the issues our players are most interested in, like reload, red gas, battle of sub enforcer, etc. Massive patch in testing now. This is good, you know. Of course, of course they were doing a massive patch, and of course they were testing the patch right now. Like this is not, this is not a big mystery, right now. We know that they're doing this. We know that they're working on the uh, on the patch right now. We uh, last week we got confirmation that the uh, the reload bug uh, finally they found a solution for that, but they couldn't just like live patch it inside the game. They couldn't. There's no hot fixing hot fixing solution right now for this kind of issue because it was related to uh, many different bits and parts that need to be uh, implemented inside the game, and those bits and parts. Uh, relate to other systems and they need to package this all together into one big patch that they're putting out also they're fixing other stuff uh, so we know that the patch is in testing right now um, currently I need to I because I forgot to mention it at, at the beginning we are 25 days and 15 hours until the end of season one at the time of this recording at the time that we're doing this right now so just like there's a patch there's a season ending soon just keep that in mind okay that's all a part of a of a big plan that's supposed to be all put together um and that they have to keep in mind as well on their end okay and don't be like this guy that says if it's not here in a half week the game is done for you are not 
you're not Nostradamus. And especially this guy has been uh, has been pushing a lot of negativity inside the community for not necessarily good reasons. Uh, but in terms of like things that are being fixed in the next patch that we know were known issues that they were working on, we know that uh, the infinite loading screen issue, they're confirming that it is currently fixed. Uh, so they have a fix for this. Uh, there's no point in going the in, in the link again. It's just going to link you to the previous um, uh, the previous news update that they that they said with the amount of uh, fixes and bugs that they were working on that they knew weren't fixed by the previous patch, but they're going to work on for the next one. Uh, so here's the tweet that they even put out. Let's let's just read it, okay? Guy says. Um, Mulian, C. Mulian, I don't know. When playing with friends in crossplay, no roadmap, no info, sad. And David responds, it's coming. I, to, to me, I think that it, he, he's, he means that a roadmap is coming. Or, or he's answering maybe the friends in crossplay is coming. Or maybe both. We don't know. It's not clear. But I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, like, let's not get our hopes up necessarily in terms of this, okay? Let's just say that he's talking about the roadmap. So that's why I'm going to call this, like, at least a roadmap is coming, okay? Because that is definitely the thing that is needed. I know that a lot of people are asking for friends in crossplay, uh, but they also told us that friends in crossplay. It's a lot. Uh, they they need a lot of technical things to be put into put together, and also have to deal with the PlayStation Network, which is not an easy issue. Uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, let's say uh, negotiation negotiating with the people that play PlayStation Network and a lot of, you know, there's, there's different steps to follow. It's complicated. I've already talked about this beforehand. Um, but a roadmap is something that definitely the community needs. So we know exactly. So, okay, at this point, this is what's happening. This is what we got in the works. Because right now, the only thing that the community has is there's bugs. We know. Our, our, the, the amount of players is dropping. We know. We're working on this. And that's all the community has right now if they're not paying attention to the news like we are right now. It feels like there's, you know, nothing. Because, anyways, there's not a lot of people that are actually, that also actually like to read the things that are being put out there. Just, just reading. It's easy. But, anyways. And also, you don't have necessarily all the time in the world to go through Twitter. You got so many things to uh, to look at. So, I know, attention span and everything and a bunch of stuff. Okay, next up. Greeting, Kindred. All four Ventru outfits are now alive and will stay until the current season ends. And as per your vote, we will also be releasing the two most voted on-store items, starting with the Flamingo hair color and the Dreadhawk style tomorrow on June, four, uh, June 17th. So, uh, what they're referring to... Hold on, let me just link this first. There we go. Um, what they are referring to... Let's go into the game. Hello. We're dancing. We're chilling. Okay. Um, in the store, they are referring to this outfit... The Tycoon outfit, which is for males, and the Sharon outfit for males as well, for Ventru. So, brown and black. Uh, I believe that they're referring to also these, the Ventru. Oh, we are having an issue. Oh, okay. The Gunslinger and Emissary. Let me see if I can change my archetype. Will this fix the issue? Whoops, that's not this one. 
Yes. It's once you have the character equipped, then you can see it. It's a bug. They know about it. Uh, so this one's a very nice uh, gray coat with some purple burgundy. I don't know exactly what's the name of the colors. Gunslinger is there. I mean, it's always been there, but these are the four that they're referring to. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of... I'll switch my archetype back to uh, my muse. All right. Sorry, we did this, we met this. So, it's completely at the end of the store. You've got the most voted for in the survey, in the store survey that we had the previous week. Uh, the Dreadhawk was one of the most voted on items to be there permanently for people who missed it. And also the uh, Flamingo Hair, which is the pink one, which, you know... It's fantastic. It's a good color hair. Uh, of course, it's not exactly what people asked for when they said, like, we want more things. But keep in mind that, like we said last week, uh, the store, they feel like this is a very basic bare bones store that you currently have inside the game. And there needs to be a rehaul of the store how it works we saw it was a tweet by david that said we had no uh we had no discounts we had no bundles and it was very bare bones so uh with his uh tweet that he said about revamping uh, revamping the store i think that's going to be a part of the things that are going to be uh in the pa they're going to be either in the massive patch or they're going to be part of the season two stuff we're gonna see because right now we have uh we have the items that are part of the seasons right now okay because this section this whole section is seasonal items so maybe once the season is uh over then maybe like they're gonna take the opportunity as well as switching those things they're gonna be switching uh how the store works also currently if you are currently uh, like listening live right now this weekend uh, actually today the mohawk and the full afro which have been the two most asked hairstyles uh of the uh, uh, by the community they are finally in game back from early access uh if you miss those and i did miss those during early access like now's the time to buy them uh there's some really fun uh, combinations that you can do with those two hairstyles, like grab them. Like this is no re like this is why they're they're epic hairstyles. They're really like people have been asking for those like for a very long while. Okay. Gonna make our character dance while we go back into the news. Um Okay. Where were we at? Okay, we were having, as I suspected, David's been letting in a little information on what's happening uh, inside the team uh, of the Blood Hunt team at Shark Mob. Um, here, there's uh, David SPD or David Hemmum. I don't know exactly what's the name. Uh, saying, David, you've been, uh, it's David talking to David, that's fun. Uh, David, you've been extremely helpful and is forthcoming with people, but my point is the masses. Your tweets are obscure in the grand scheme of things. Addressing the people as a whole will help uh, let people know and, uh, oh, and reassure them that you guys aren't flailing your arms around and screaming. Which is apparently what some people are thinking that they're doing in internally. David's saying, that's coming. We are doing some rejigging of our processes to better handle the demands and frequencies of updates. And of course, communication around that. It's a tad slow on the start, but we'll be better promise. It's exactly like I've said before. They, uh, all of this is a learning process internally. Uh, right now, this is like, okay, even though there's a, a bunch of people in there who have already worked in the industry before, who've already worked on some games that some people know, okay? And putting all, like, some all-stars or putting a bunch of, like, experienced devs together does not necessarily mean that the, that everything is going to go well because it's still a business. 
the way a business works. We need to get everything together. Even if you have, even if you have everything planned, everything, if even if you have everything all mapped out inside your company on exactly like we've made some procedures of what exactly needs to happen when you want to get a patch out. Uh, you need to actually go through the process at least once and then decide like, okay, we need to change things. We need to switch things up. Uh, this process, when we patch things, it did not go well. When we launched the games, this and this and that thing did not go well. Uh, the community wants this. Okay, we had a roadmap. The community wants a different thing. How can we make those maps of oh, make those interests work together we're gonna have to switch up things inside um, so this is exactly what he's saying right now because right now there's all the internal stuff that's happening the uh, the the finding uh, you know uh, collecting the bugs finding the bugs finding fixes to the bugs uh, testing the bugs uh, texting uh, testing the fixes maybe some back and forth when you know find different behaviors in QA and then putting it all together inside a patch sometimes you know uh, sometimes you, you never know maybe it's maybe it's possible that they had a patch ready to go out maybe two weeks ago and then something broke and then they find a disc they found a discrepancy or a bad behavior that actually affects all the stuff that they thought was ready and then they had to shelve all this find a solution and then we have to wait another time until everything is fixed until we found solutions for all of this you never know like uh, we uh, as as players even people that know ex that know about what's happening behind the scenes we don't know what's happening behind the scenes if you've been looking at game dev twitter you know that there's a lot of stuff that you know will only come out like after ndas have expired okay and there's been a lot of very interesting stuff that's been coming out. I suggest if you want to know more about this, there's a, a Twitter account called uh, Ask a Game Dev. Um, they've been tweeting some blog posts. They've been re uh, retweeting a lot of people from the industry. Um, it's a, it's a good way of knowing exactly what's or having a, a kind of a glimpse of you know little snapshots of things that happen in time for different games. Yes, exactly, Cthulhu. Managing internal and external expectations is not easy. I will zip. So, you know, it's good. Right now, while they're trying to fix the game, they're also trying to fix things internally so they can get stuff quicker, easier, faster to us, have a better response time. Um, there's a lot of game studios that live or die on those changes on those internal changes we don't know what's going to happen okay right now what we know is that we like the game we want the game to be better they also like the game they want it to be better but we have to see what's going to happen okay so let's move on to the next thing blood Hunt tweeted on june 14th we will be doing some changes to our mode uh, mode rotations to improve matchmaking time Starting with trios. Trios will be back at a later point and we will be sharing a schedule of how we aim to rotate the modes to improve matchmaking. This is a temporary solution. I like that this was written. Right now this is saying the, the, the issue is matchmaking. We're going to get closer to this. We, I have some tweets of people explaining this better than I can actually explain it. There's Purple Excess here, who's been tweeting a lot about Blood Hunt, uh, saying, this is a weird move. If anything, should remove duos. David answers, duos? Duos is largest mode by quite a margin. Quite a margin. I know you've seen a lot of streamers stream their trios. And other games have been like, trios is the way to go. But look at this, based on actual factual information from in, uh, internally, by quite a margin, duos is the is the largest mode so far. 
like before making those changes. Now it's the data is going to change. Um, plus faster queue times based on team size. If needed, next time it will be duos instead for weekdays. Week weekends is a completely different beast. As we all know, weekends in terms of populations in game, that's very different because you have people that for, for, for two days can do whatever they want with their time. We've got weekend warriors, as we call them, as I call myself as well. Um, suddenly have a lot more time than just doing my you know, logging in for just a quick amount of time to do my dailies and then we're done. Okay. So that was interesting to know. Like first of the facts that we've been getting about the population inside the game. I think this is the first time that we've got like direct confirmation of this. So yeah, the idea would be to uh, remove one of the queues right now or like disable it for a while and have the population of that queue populate the other queues instead. And of course, this is a whole, pro a whole process that they're trying to do right now uh, to see what's going to uh, to see what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, there was a uh, motion gaming, which, you know, I know some people like him. I know some people don't like him because of the ways that he formulates his thoughts and ideas on Twitter. Uh, I think that he's still got it. He's still bringing up a bunch of good points, even though he's not very like super on point exactly with the wording. It's good. Uh, he explains it. The matchmaking time was uh, getting longer, so they have reduced the amount of simultaneous queues. Duos a very popular mode. Trios too. So they've decided to rotate these modes until the player base increases. So this is just like a moving around the uh, the player base into the different funnels that we have currently because we got uh, we've got solo blood hunt mode we've got duos we've got trios we've got solo ranked um, all this and you have ps5 to think about also as well in, in, in that term so that's a lot of that's a lot of funnels and that was a thing that uh, the developers were worried originally during early access uh, because originally it was just solo it was just solo mode uh, and then they the population the the uh, the player base started uh, the community asked started asking for uh, trios and then duos and then they were worried about that that's why at some point in early access they uh, put a pause on trios force everyone to go back in uh, to, to force everyone to go into duos because they just put duos in the game so just see if like people would be interested if duos would work uh and then you know there was such a big outcry because most of the population was already used to playing trios that they re-disabled duos and re-enabled three trios for a while uh but ever since the live game has been out apparently duos has been much more popular than it was shown by the uh, early access data. Behavior of the community. Devs have to deal with that. Uh, so, that was all decisions on June 14th. But then on June 15th, trios are back! Because <laughs> that's the thing that happens. Uh, so they say, okay, Bloodhound community, Trios is back. We also share some details on how we'll be moving forward with, with the rotation of modes, plus rank mode with crossplay off for PS5 players this weekend. So, we are going to go into that post, uh, which also touches a little bit on the surveys that they did last week. So, uh, rotating modes in Bloodhunt. Uh, thank you for thank you so much for filling in our June community survey. We are hard at work counting all the votes and analyzing the data. And so far, from what we can see, most of the data points to the discussion that are being passionately mentioned throughout the community on social media, which means that we are on the right track. Moment about this. The idea, and I've mentioned this last week, was that sometimes you need to put out a survey, an anonymous survey out there that is not entirely based on forum posts, social media, uh, Twitch streams, or anything like that. 
you need to go like, hey, you personally, outside of other influences, give us your real opinion on this topic. A lot of other games do that. And it's not just like games, it's just a business practice. Just It's just a good business practice. Um, it's just like, what are your concerns? Tell us just you, one-on-one. -on -one. And what they found out right now so far is that, well, exactly what you've been putting out on Twitter and, and, and social media, uh, that's exactly what you're saying in the survey is immediately aligning with what you're telling us. So this is great. This doesn't mean, however, that the info that they got in the survey wasn't good. This survey reached out to probably more people than um, uh, more people than it would have normally. The other, the only other thing that I found uh, a little bit weird, uh, I would have maybe uh, for specifically the community survey, not necessarily the store survey, because the store survey was just a thing for the, you know, the people that are doing everyday blood hunt stuff but the community survey i would have actually sent out an email to people you would have gotten a whole different batch of different data from that but right now it's probably uh just the people that are on blood hunt every day that are on the social media keeping an eye always on blood hunt that got uh info back to you so that in itself, it's good. Uh, they probably picked up a lot of other like little tidbits that probably people didn't think of saying because sometimes on social media you don't necessarily have uh, the feeling that the devs are actually listening to you. Now they're saying like, here, we are going to listen to you. Whatever you write, we are going to read and analyze whatever you're telling us. So here's your opportunity. So maybe they've collected a bunch of very interesting info. Uh, we will see they're going to get back to us. We will share more details of our findings in the, up, uh, in, in the upcoming article. There you go. However, this article is what we want to do to improve the game in the short term for our players today. First, we know that each mode in Blood Hunt has its own hardcore fan base, but the player numbers are currently not large enough to support all of them at once. S meaning, queue times are longer. Uh, so we will be running certain modes for a limited time during weekdays and other during the weekends. We think that this will improve the matchmaking times, while at the same time create new opportunities for players to come back to play a different mode. Basically, if you're playing only solo blood hunt mode and suddenly it's not available to you, maybe you're gonna try the other modes. Maybe you're gonna have maybe you're gonna have a go at this. Uh, I was looking at some people, uh, uh, Miss Val I was actually in Miss Valkyrie's stream uh, yesterday, and just realizing she was queuing up for trios, uh, just as a solo, queuing in trios, and running into a lot of low-level accounts. So possibly uh, these are solo uh, solos that don't want to play solo ranked, but decide, hey, I'm going to get the easy win, maybe, or I'm going to try trios and see if that works. Uh, this is, you know, it's creating a new environment. It's creating new games where just like maybe inexperienced player, players that don't know, that have, don't have the experience of trios suddenly will go like, hey, maybe this is fun. Or maybe solo ranked is the thing that they want. Whatever. Anyways. Our hope here is that focused game modes will drive more interest, even if it is for a limited time frame. We know that this is not optimal, and this is a temporary solution until we have been able to get uh, the game back into the state it needs to be and we can grow our player base. This is the sentence to take out of this article, okay? Because a lot of people complained about this already and just like, no, this is a band-aid fix till we can get the patch out, the next patch out, try to fix everything, iron out all the big issues of the game, and now we have a stable game that we can work on to make more content, make the game more interesting. Right now they have to fix the game, as we've said previously in the David tweet. 
so the current plans for this week june 14th uh initial test uh, to see if we can improve the overall matchmaking times by removing trios uh 15th of june trios comes back we had uh initially planned to have it offline until the weekend but we can see that many of you want to practice for the upcoming boom tv tournament and of course we want to support that for more details we're going to talk about the boom tv tournament in just a second so you you know exactly what we're talking about um 17th of june for the weekend we will bring back ranked solos where crossplay is turned off by default Meeting, uh, so well, hold on, I'm going to continue. Solo Blood Hunt mode will be disabled during the, during the weekend. Trees and uh, duos will remain as is. So basically, they're just disabling one queue and solo ranked while well, you have solo ranked PC and solo ranked PS5. And then you have regular trio, trios and duos because they don't have ranked uh, built in those queues yet. Uh, we are running solo ranked with crossplay off by default as a test to see how popular it is on PS5. So make sure you play during this weekend, and we might use this data to decide if we should run Blood Hunt with crossplay off by default in the future for certain modes. There, I don't have anything else to say. That's that's exactly what it says. Uh, we understand that these are small changes compared to what you are asking for. But it's what we can work with while we are working on our larger updates. We're trying to think with the th with the pieces that we currently have on the board. That is exactly what they're saying. We appreciate your feedback and your input is and always will be a vital component to our decision strategy for the future of Blood Hunt. Again, a reminder that Blood Hunt, this game, is driven by the wants and needs of the community. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to hear more from them. Uh, so, just going to get back exactly to what we were saying. Uh, because David is, David's still talking about just talking to David and saying, like, oops, better re-enable it. It's the stuff that makes, you, makes me doubt your guys' ability to even fix the majority of problems people have. We still haven't had any articles about what you, you lot are doing to address overall feedback, and you keep saying soon we're waiting. Uh, maybe a little impatient here. Okay. Uh, just get it. Take the link here and put it there. There we go. Uh, and David's saying the reason was and still is that we wanted to make sure players got games fast enough during the low peak of the weekdays, Monday to Wednesday. Having too many items to pick uh, to pick from makes for slow queues. The reason we backtracked was the fact that we have an event Monday. Uh, it was the right decision looking at the trend break yesterday. Okay, so what exactly... Wait, I lost my thing. Uh, so what exactly is that... Is that tournament that we are... That we kept referring to? It is the Boom TV tournament. On Monday the 20th of June. Uh, at these times. That we have here. There's a, Tim Co uh, a time kill race. With 25k in the lot there. So, this has caused, this tournament has caused some uh, several issues. Well, first of all, like that being announced and, and, and people like mentioning that to Blood Hunt, uh, the Blood Hunt account and people, uh, the day that they decided to remove, uh, to temporarily disable trios for the week. Uh, only to have solos that made them reconsider uh, because people the uh, people that were going to uh, participate in that uh, in that event uh, would need to have some practice time in trios this week so they decided to switch it back on for that um, and uh, also there's that there's the thing where this um, this tournament uh, that they've been they've been retweeting uh, Blood Hunt account has been retweeting a lot of people that are a part of this event just to hype it up even though uh, Blood Hunt 
or Shark Mob doesn't have anything to do with that tournament, by the way. Uh, they've just been hyping it up because, you know, it's their game. There's an organic tournament that's being created by someone out there, and there's a big prize pool uh, attached to it. There's It's been garnering a lot of attention. Um, but also a lot of criticism because of the people that are a part or that are being chosen for this tournament. Um, uh, well, let's say there's a debate about that. It's been irritating a few people inside the community of Blood Hunt. Uh, I don't want to go into drama about this, but we're going to get back to it a little bit later. We're going to go talk about that. But this is the tournament that we're referring to. Um, yeah. So, um, even though the, uh, the Blood Hunt account has been retweeting a lot of stuff about just to, you know, hype up the event. It's still being said by uh, Samir, aka Combat Glue, we are not trying to push an esports e scene at the moment. With bugs that need to fix, and the game is not where it needs it needs to be to push that. Uh, and, th and that we have said, uh, we have said that all the time. We helped Boon TV because we thought it was a good cause, though. So, Again, reiterating, they're not trying to make esports a thing for Blood Hunt. They're not trying to make it happen. Um, but, you know, it's a good thing. Publicity that's being thrown about, uh, that's being thrown on Blood Hunt by uh, a lot of the people that are participating are big Twitch streamers. So, more publicity for the game is good for the game. In some sort of way uh, but yeah we'll get back on like there's people that do not agree with that um, and that's a good thing for a good thing you know hold on uh, so here's a tweet that's just like we're going back into the whole disabling and cross uh, at crossplay stuff this is the post that they said uh, this weekend, starting on Friday, solo ranked mode returns for a limited time. And as per popular request with crossplay off, it will be exciting to see who the best players on PS5. Who the best players are on PS5. This has been a big ask from PS5 players to just disable crossplay. Let us PS5 players square off against other PS5 players because uh, a majority of, pe of people are saying mouse and keyboard players have. Uh, have a strict advantage over console players. Well, let's turn crossplay off and see it. Uh, I know that my, in my personal experience, uh, PS5 players have been able to kill me just fine on on the solo blood hunt mode. Um, I, and I've I've seen a bunch of them, and you know, end up in top five in games that I've been a part of. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's it's. I think it's more of a perception issue than an actual data issue, but I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue. Okay, it's it's the people at Shark Mob who will be able to determine that kind of information, and they're putting a lot of info, uh, a, a lot of a lot of um, uh, uh, how can I say? They're making sure that everyone got it, got it, got it. Um, understands that this is mostly like we're putting the focus on ps5 players because ps5 players are the most uh angry about the state of the game right now uh in term on, on on their side so like let's make this ps5 players make the hype retweet if you got ps5 uh friends that have blood hunt like get them like this is the weekend for you go ahead go do it um we want to see if people are happy with this. But also, this is also for PC. So if you're a PC player, solo ranked PC, uh, PC players only is happening currently for the weekend. Um, and uh, some people were asking about crossplay off. Like, what was the reason behind it? Uh, they actually uh, they actually explained it. It was already in the in the patch in the um, in the article that I, we were just reading. But 
they've reiterated it. Rank mode has, has now been activated with crossplay off. It's time to get sweaty and reach the top. After the weekend, we will evaluate the data to determine if we can look into doing more crossplay off without it having a negative impact on matchmaking times. If people are actually playing the cr with the crossplay off and are actually liking it and giving good feedback on it, there's a lot of interest for this maybe they're gonna do it i've already seen on twitter a bunch of uh blood hunt fans or people that tweet regularly about blood hunt um say that uh without solo blood hunt mode they are not interested into going into the other queues they're not willing to do ranked they're not interested in soloing in duos or trios or fighting a squad or anything else but I've seen these people mention that. Um, I personally am going to... Like, I, I play solo Blood Hunt mode all the time. Uh, but I'm going to have to get into ranked mode because I want the rewards. Um, I skipped out on it when ranked mode was activated. Uh, I played a few games, but I'm realizing that... Uh, we don't know when ranked is going to come back and the season is about to end. Maybe it's a good time to get into ranked. I don't know. Uh, there's other explanations that are coming from David about crossplay here. Um, uh, ranked mode is the mode that supports crossplay off. The mode itself is less important here. Because remember, we don't have ranked on duos and trios yet because there needs to be, as David has already said back in the past, there needs to be some things uh, integrated into that to make it happen. Uh, this is really a gauge to see how population does on its own island. Uh, it does, of course, affect PC in the sense that respawn mode is gone. And we're always looking at ways to rectify that for any future endeavors here. So, really, I don't know if that's been, if the point has been, um, uh, if the point's been, like, made evident for everyone, but this is an experiment, and they're going to look at the reactions, they're going to look at the data. This will determine the next steps with crossplay on and off with the return of ranked mode the interest of it like this is important so if you want to support any of this play the game this weekend or make your voice known like make your thoughts known on twitter about it and and we're gonna see where we're gonna go with this uh okay we're gonna speed it up uh, there's something about matchmaking timing that I thought was very interesting that David said because um, people were complaining about the um, about matchmaking queues when uh, they put out some fixes during uh, when ranked mode was ranked and cos and crossplay uh, the changes were made yesterday on Friday when it was going live uh, it's like fix this now is for the night a uh, night owls early birds meaning, you know, off-peak off, off peak times. Um, they've changed. They've made some changes to matchmaking. Five minutes will expand to all ranks. Six minutes will lead to adjacent region added. No more NA East separated from West, and Aussies can play too. So, you might be matchmaked into... Uh, sessions with other ranks which was already something that was in place because uh beforehand ranked was not something that was popular it was you know very very much advertised by the community that ranked sucked so people didn't play ranked um and so you had a very large pool where the top obsidian players were playing against bronze players Unfortunately, you need to have a lobby with enough people to make the game viable, and if that means mixing and matching people from uh, peoples from uh, all different sorts of ranks together, so be it. 
you know or else might as well just might as well just turn it off which is what they did um adjacent region added uh, yes they did they did mention beforehand that uh, servers from uh, North America, East and West were supposed to be separated, but now they're going to be together. So it's possible that for going from one game to another, you might experience lag because suddenly you're on another coast than the one you normally connect to. That's normal that happens. Uh, going to have to deal with that. So what all of this talking about ranked... You know, I, I just wanted to put out a reminder that there are ranked rewards uh, for Season 1. The Oh, hold on, hold on just a second. Cthulhu will also be interesting to see how it will affect ping across cross-region play, uh, more incoming analytic data as well. Yes, exactly. That is, yeah, cross-region play, analytics about this. Uh, we know, they know more than us about... Uh, about all of this, you know, it's going to be on their end. Um, and they are the guys that have the controls over this. We don't have anything to say. What all we have to do, like our duty and all of this, is just to play the freaking game. It's, it's that simple. So, yes, we've got uh, the ranked rewards that I want to, like, remind people that they exist. Yes, we can see those. We can see this. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I've got the Blood Hunt game behind, but that's normal. Let's not say about this. So, Bronze. Bronze is basically by default. You start playing a game in ranked, you're gonna get this. This is an uh, this is an icon? Yes. This is an icon, this is an icon, this is a banner. Very basic. You're gonna get this at the end of the season. But then you get into Silver... And you've got a tattoo here, and you see the tattoo goes all the way around the back. Uh, what about the front, you say? Well, I suspect it's the same thing as the gold tattoo, but the gold is showing the front, silver is showing the back, but it's going to be like silver like this for, yep. And these are things that you're going to get. Platinum, if you're going to get like really, really grindy, you start getting a mask. That's interesting. A diamond, some people thought originally that it was very funny that a diamond rank you get a gold mask anyways uh an obsidian you get the complete black mask with a like a serial number here on the side but look at those look at that icon in the banner here these are i'll never be good enough to be obsidian to be an obsidian player um the icon and banner here are also pretty great as well for diamond um, and platinum, gold, and silver, and bronze are just basically recolors, but at different recolors, and they're all gorgeous, all of them. So that's what we have in terms of uh, in terms of rank rewards. Uh, just as a reminder that you know, if you want to get those, we don't know exactly when they're gonna bring ranked back, when they're gonna you know turn it on again. So you know, have a go at it. Uh, more people play, uh, more ranked is going to get better. Of course, like we need to get a population of players back inside the game to make it work, work. But you understand, you understand what I mean by this. Um, okay, so that's that was a quick reminder. Uh, in terms of other different news, that's not related to cross-player matchmaking or how the game plays. Uh, they've always had this uh, collaboration since the launch of the game, or a few days after the launch of the game, uh, where you can track your stats with Tracker GG. We can go make an account, uh, and basically, they, yeah, they've got they've got the whole little profile blood hunt here. Uh, you can like connect your Shock Mob account, make yourself an account there, and all your stats that are coming from the game are listed there. You can see. That's how most people track their stats. But now there's an LFG function where you can ask to add yourself there if you're looking for another trio team. Uh, and all your stats are there. Uh, they can look um, personally at your, you know, match history. Uh, and people like can uh, message you or send you the, you know, the Discord, um, your Discord link. And they can chat at you. 
ask you, uh, you know, if you want to be part of a team or something. Uh, the posts are there for twenty uh, for forty eight hours, so you can re keep posting there if you want to find yourself a, a group for uh, trios because you know this the game itself doesn't support anything uh, to help with this. Um, another little fun reminder. Uh, that was posted actually today, and I completely forgot about it because I don't spend my time on uh, Spotify. But the community, Bloodhound community, has been putting itself together. Uh, like, you know, it's been managed by Shark Mob. I believe it's Samir, probably. Samir, aka Combat Glue. Uh, yeah, little playlist where there's a bunch of, like, yeah, of course it starts with a Twilight song, but you've got a song. <laughs> You've got also Blade. Uh, you've got like a lot of uh, a lot of cool things that are or or are not related to Blood Hunt. Uh, some good old Super Beast by Rob Zombie. Um, yeah, a bunch of a bunch of stuff that's that's in there. Uh, Bloodsport by Skull and KMFDM. I like that one. Uh, yeah, that's a fun quick thing if you want to find yourself some more music that are that is Blood Hunt related. That's a thing. Uh, another thing that's related to community, we have, uh, actually this weekend, actually today, we have the Gamers Feud, uh, which usually, it's a, it's a game show. They do so, they do a bunch of game, uh, 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 shows with different types of community. Uh, we are having a Blood Hunt Jeopardy this weekend. You can see people on the screen that are part of this, uh, to see, or on the side, just, this is Jukas Laps, because I see that my... Big, big ass head is uh, hiding all of this. My camera. Uh, we have other, we have a bunch of other people. We have three teams that are a part of this. Hey, the, the more people that I know, Reclaim Joey, Delacroix, and Eight Bit Babe uh, are going to be there. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's at three uh, three ten EST today that that's happening. I don't know. It might be fun. Going to check it out. Uh, another thing that's happening, uh, yeah, they can't. I guess it's Blood Hunt that decided to do this, to have a a, a kill race between Glocktane and Viking. Like, obviously, they're 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 some of the two most like, uh, I don't know, prominent, uh, like killers inside the. Uh, the when I say prominent, I mean people know them and people know of their skill. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are, you know, in the top 10 killers of North America or world in this game. It's possible. But these two guys are uh, really good at Twitch. They're really good at the game. They're going to duke it out this Sunday. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, so it's at 2 p.m. EDT. Uh, 1 a.m. PDT. Gonna see what happens with this. Um, yeah, we're running a little long right now. Ah, F it. I'm still gonna go about this. But yeah, in regards to this, like, we've got this. We had the other tournament. We've got the Jeopardy thing. So, like... Basically, what I'm seeing this week is, like, if you want to create your own tournament, you want your own event, go do it. Just do it. Uh, going back to what I was talking about earlier, about the uh, the Trios tournament by Boom TV, the negative stuff that came out of it is that there's a, a, a lot of people from the community pointed out that uh, the people that are going to be part of that tournament are not prominent or people that are hyping the game or playing the game regularly they're just big streamers with big numbers now while that is a good thing for the health of the game getting more people in it's a free game remember blood hunt is a free game it's no paying it free game if you can advertise it to people like hey i'm playing this game it's free that's always good um but yeah, there's a bunch of people that are just like, I'm playing, I'm grinding this game every day. I ha I don't have, I'm not, I'm not good at the Twitch as much. Uh, 
I don't have the numbers. How about we have a tournament where we have people that are there hyping the game every day, or at least a, lot, a big part of the week that know all about the game. Uh, how about we have a tournament with just those people? Uh, I know that uh, Motion Gaming has raised his hands, has volunteered, like, is there is there interest for this? So, basically, if you're out there and you have any idea for a tournament or something about the, the Blood Hunt community to do, just do it. Advertise it on Blood Hunt Twitter. Just go out, just go out and do it. Uh, we'll see. Like, suddenly there is an interest uh, for, for people to do, like, things other than just simply playing the game day in and day out. Okay? So, that's the thing. Just do it. Um, another thing that might interest some people, but some not. But I found it very interesting. Uh, you might want to just go ahead, go on that link and uh, read it for yourself. There's uh, Tobias Solem, I don't know if that's exactly his name, uh, but he's a community developer at Sharp Mob that asked, like, do you care at all about the story or narrative of Blood Hunt? A lot of answers here are very interesting. It, they're ranging from no to, you like, there's a story? Uh, but there's a whole bunch of people that are just like, I'm an old school vampire the masquerade fan from, or I'm from tabletop, and I'm just like, I'm not playing the game to play the game. I'm playing the game just to unlock the lore. Uh, I'm interested because, by the way, if you didn't know, the lore that is happening inside this game is canon. Uh, it is canon to the vampire the masquerade. Um, uh, world, it's it's a part of the world of darkness. Uh, not only that, it, also if you didn't know, when they were developing the game, uh, they were developing the idea of the game, uh, uh, a lot of proof of concept with the people from World of Darkness. Um, if you've paid attention at all to the the series L.A. by Night, the tabletop gaming. Um, uh, I think it was like it was on Twitch and it was on YouTube. Um, it's still on YouTube. Uh, they they played it for five seasons with Jason Carl, which is uh, one of the community managers. I believe community managers at World of Darkness who played the storyteller. Uh, there is uh, there, there's a lot of references during LA by Night. Um, they they did this thing regularly where they. Uh, would uh, just drop in little tidbits of info about other stuff that's happening outside the world, or uh, naming some names of prominent people that have not been inside uh, the story that they were telling. Um, but there are a lot of things that were... Uh, th they, there were some tidbits of information that relate to things that ha are happening in Prague that were inside that show. Uh, in the uh, V5, the Vampire the Masquerade V5 uh, books I have back there, um, <laughs> there are some mentions about things that happen in Prague. Uh, the 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 way, like some ideas that the developers at Shark Mob uh, have brought into the game, some of them, uh, uh, the people of the uh, World of Darkness that they work with, even like took like these ideas are great. We're gonna put them inside the books, inside the official books. So by the time that the uh, version five of Vampire the Masquerade was actually published and out to the people, there are already some canon things about this game that were already integrated inside the book. So story and narrative, like it's actually a big thing. If you know anything about what's happening in, in, in V5, there's a lot of references uh, of that inside the game currently, um, yeah. So have if you if that interests you, if, if the people the, the 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 answers of people like they're very rich and varied. It's good. It's a good read. It's a good fun read. Um, also, it's very important for us playing the game in terms of like what's going to happen because we are when we're playing the game we're in Elysium. Um, or we're disconnected from Elysium. 
and and there's some things that are changing there's like if you're paying attention or not it's possible to the quests that are happening inside the game uh like all of this like there's a story unfolding in front of you and uh and uh, you know it's all driven by the story the 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 situation that we're putting itself like uh, my whole take on this is the uh like the whole premise of why we're doing the blood hunt it's because there is a lore reason behind it why there's the entity why there's the red gas it's all about the storytelling of the game um someone has mentioned let me just go back to uh my twitter for a second this has been interesting because now we're starting to get into season two stuff. Bandito Gaming asks, "Is there any changes coming with season two? I really love this game, and I see that Blood Hunt have so much potential. I really will will well, I really would love to see the game with some cool voice lines. The Elysium, oh sorry, the Elysium is so quiet, and that shouldn't be that way. The emotes should have sounds, music, etc." And David replies. Expect changes in this for sure in the next update. So a less quiet Elysium coming in season two. Fun thing to throw out out there. Um, I know that we are running over my, I said one hour that we're going to do, but you know, let's let let's talk about it. Let's talk about it for a moment about things that are to come. Uh, right now, I'm having a very weird picture-in-picture picture thing that's happening right now. Maybe if we do it like this, there we go. That's been up. That's been like that most of the most of the recording, hasn't it? Well. Crap. Anyways, I'm learning things about OBS. Fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a few things about the game. The game right now. Let's see this. <laughs> Live edit. Yeah, we have 25 days until the end of season one. Um, uh, I've tweeted this to uh, the Blood Hunt account, but I've been asking how will the end of Season 1 happen? And what will happen for the start of, of Season 2? Like, how will that play out? Is it like Countdown ends the next the next season will start immediately after? Uh, is or is there going to be a delay, and how long is going to be the delay? Is it a question of hours or days or weeks? We don't know any of this, because uh, we just know that there's a season and there's a timer, and we know, and it's always been like, there's always been a, 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 a mention of season two. There's not been any questions about it, like, will there be a season two? Like none of this. It's always been in all the communications that's been coming out of of Blood Hunt and all the different different people at Shark Mob uh, on social media. It's always been a season two will happen. Uh, it's just that we don't know exactly how that's going to work because uh, let's say I'm going to take for example World of Warcraft because they're one of the first people that's the one of the first groups that's been doing that and that's the one I know of. Know of uh, no more of when they're doing their PvP seasons, uh, they're giving a hard like uh, time and date of like when it's going to happen, and then when it's over, they take basically a screenshot of everyone's ranks, uh, and then they say usually it takes about a week for them. Uh, for them, it takes about a week to just like be able to solidify everything and make sure that the right accounts are being tagged for the right rewards. And then at the next uh, maintenance slash reset that they do on World of Warcraft, 
then the rewards get distributed to people. Uh, but we don't have maintenance on Blood Hunt. It's just there all the time. So what's going to be the transition? Is it going to be like what like what's going to be what's going to happen to the rewards? Is it going to be instant? Is it going to be like give us a week or two weeks to give you the rewards? Um, yeah, what's going to happen with this? Also, again, 25 days. If we're going to play around with uh you know ranked mode being on and off we need a schedule to know exactly like what's our window if we want to rank up uh anyone that wants to go that has the capacity and the skill to rank obsidian i've seen a lot of tweets i've seen a few tweets here and there about people that just like they're just getting antsy seeing the countdown like start to go down and you're going like, am I going to have a chance to actually have a go at ranked? Like, because I want, I want my obsidian or I want diamond. You know, I want to get those rewards specifically. We need a schedule. We need to know what's going to happen. And also, all of this, think of like the season ending. There's going to be a patch for the content of, the, of, the, of season two. But still, that's a patch for the season, while at the same time they're trying to patch out the issues of the game. Are those going to be two different patches? Is it like the fact that it, David was saying that there's they're currently testing a massive patch? Does the massive patch include the changes or like the, 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 the data, the artwork and assets of season two? Is that going to be integrated into it? Is that why? It's such a big patch because they're going to go like like 25, 25 days. They can't necessarily patch every two weeks. As we've mentioned before, they don't have a big team for that. And they're rearranging how they're working things inside the team. So you have to factor that in. What exactly is going to happen? Like, is it going to be a patch for fixing things? And then when the timer runs out, when the timer runs out for the... Uh, for the season is it going to be immediately we're going to get a patch the next day when it when it's when the timer runs to zero like that's the thing to discuss and we need like it's not necessarily things to discuss more as we need answers from shark mob like what are they like what's their plan for this because they have a plan like maybe people are maybe people would say like they don't have a plan for this no they obviously have a plan because they have seasons, you know? Um, yes, Cthulhu, I was getting to this. So, uh, that's probably going to come into play because I don't know if people were there in early access, but Elysium did not look like this, okay? There's been some improvements to the game. Those banners up there, they were not there before season one. Um, like I mean, for for some some time, uh, Custos and all the three Primogen that we have inside the game, like they were not there for a while in um, in early access. And when we got there, we had Kirill that was just standing here, and it, on this wall there was a big X. Okay, and then he's he's got he's got this region for himself here. And there's a lot of stuff like there's there's underground passages that seem to lead to nowhere. Uh, here there's this this platform with some things on that platform that's in this room over there. We don't know what that is. Um, like all of this, this has been a new region that's been added here. Here's Kirill. Um, there is a section here that looks like a car park that's down there. What is that for? It's not been planned there for... Uh, like, that hasn't been there before. Like, also, like, I've never had, a, like, any indication of why there's been those marks on the wall here. What exactly is that counting for? Um... So yeah, we have that. We have uh, Omnis 
on this that used to be standing here, this door used to be closed, but now it's been opened up in chapter one. Um, and he's standing there. And look at the other end. What do we have there? We have that platform with things there. That's connecting directly from Kirill's side to Omnis's side. Will that be opened? These are catacombs. These are the tombs on the side left and right that we have here. Um, but yeah, that's been changed. All the In this section, all the draperies and all those uh, metal rods... Uh, for that are made for like club lighting basically or any kind of you know professional light lighting we all know this like this wasn't there all the rooms that are decorated they weren't decorated like this it was very minimal here we had a whole like section of uh, uh boxes uh kind of like this you know traveling set up boxes uh they were all over the place and maya was standing here now she's standing here Hi, Maya. Strike a pose. Um, I hope this, these glitches get fixed. Uh, yeah, and now all these regions, as you probably noticed, like all of this has been, you know, kitted out. Um, it's not complete. It's definitely not done. We've got music coming out of this boom box here, but we know that with those speakers that are immediately overhead and on the other side, we are preparing for a club here. We're preparing for a big club scene. So there's going to be there's going to be a next step for this for sure. Uh, and that's the interesting thing to me. We got an early access. We got the primogen that have been added and we had all those classes. And on this season, we didn't get a primogen for Ventru. Well, we got a Ventru class. But we got a doorkeeper that's not letting us through. It's not a Ventru primogen. He's just holding the door. Hodor confirmed. Hodor confirmed. Um, so yeah, maybe are we gonna get are we gonna get a Ventru primogen? That's another thing maybe to discuss. But my thing is Okay, Season 1. When you start the game, it says Season 1. It's called Retribution. What's it going to be for Season 2? People may not have noticed, but there's a whole... Uh, there's been a whole theme about this season. Season 1's Retribution, but it's Retribution... Whose Retribution, exactly? Because it could be a several different people. Like, all the groups that are involved could be doing, could be, uh, like, all about retribution right now. I do not like this track right now. What's going on? Let's, let's, let's switch to the other one. There we go. Um, yeah, so whose retribution exactly is that? Um... Marcus, Prince Marcus is dead. Uh, maybe. Kirill, like, the, 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 uh, the quests that Kirill has been sending you, like, all around the, uh, all around Prague to determine exactly, like, uh, what's the fate of Prince Marcus. Right now, uh, with all of the info and data that you've been collecting, like, either for the quest or through octahedrons that you've been picking up all over the place, uh, everything points to Marcus is now dead. He's been killed by the entity. Uh, maybe. See, the, th the thing about Vampire the Masquerade is that unless you see a person meeting the final death in front of you, you can't really be sure that they're entirely dead. What we have are just, like, clues. There's no one to tell us, like, yes, I was there, I am witness, I saw it. And even then, you can't necessarily trust a, person word, a person's word in the world of darkness. That's the thing. Uh, so maybe it's retribution for Marcus's death. And, and Kirill has been the instrument of that retribution. Um... Uh, 
yes, so it could be like the retribution of Kirill because most of the quests that you've been doing, uh, that you've been doing, like the, the quest chains, have all been started with Kirill, who's been the uh, the sheriff and like the kind of de facto prince in the prince's absence, who's been setting you doing like you know brute squad uh, setting. Uh, setting the Anarchs against the Entity, the Entity against the Anarchs, uh, collecting data, putting putting video cameras to keep an eye on everyone. Uh, he has been the driving force of this. I don't know if you've noticed or if you talked to the other NPCs uh, when you were um, when you're doing Kirill's quest, but the general consensus is they're like. Yeah, he's. They they keep telling you. Yes, he's been doing the right thing, as in getting back to the entity, getting back at the Anarchs. But they are not agreeing with his methods because Kirill's a little hardcore. He's a little brute force. If you've talked to him, if you've seen his lore entries, he uh he likes to when he doesn't feel good about something he uses like to, to respond with weapons that's his usually a stack uh, that's usually his tactic so is there in season two is there gonna be some 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 blowback in regards to Kirill's actions uh like all of them have not been uh agreeing with his methods but at the same time he's the sheriff so if he's gonna tell people to go on a blood uh to continue to blood hunt and do his little tasks and tricks they're not gonna be against it officially um yeah and also during this season like it could be the retribution of like the the, the entity it could be the, the, the like because during early access, we've been uh, we've been managing our problem. Maybe this is the entity's retribution on Prague that they're doing. It could be the Anarchs. The uh, like to a certain extent, you could even argue that it's the Anarchs' retribution because you, like it's everyone against you, so everyone wants a piece of you. Because the, the the official talks between Anarchs and uh, Camarilla have fallen through, uh, maybe it's your own retribution as a player. Uh, that's the thing. Also, uh, something to note: like in the season in in the season pass in the battle pass, there's been a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of things for every class. You know, I think they did a good job to. Uh, not make it about a single clan, even though the first things that are you get in the battle pass are specifically Ventru focused. Because if you've played early access, you've already got some cosmetics and thematic elements from all the other clans were lacking in Ventru. So of course they're featuring a new a, a new class. Yeah, they're gonna put some items for you to customize a little bit with the Ventru. Uh, but they did a, a good job of like putting some more stuff for uh, the other people. We've been get we've been getting a lot of uh, nice shirts and ties. A lot of you know, this is typically Ventru at uh, attire. Um, but they've been putting a lot of other stuff that may fit may fit the other uh, the other class as well. So um, so what's going to be next? Basically. Uh, is season two going to give us another class? Are they going to give us a second Ventru archetype? Um, should they? Is also another question. Because right now, the main issue that they're having right now is balancing everything. Balancing, fixing, these are the main tasks that the devs have currently. So, I don't know, maybe adding another element inside all this balancing and fixing, maybe it's not the right time to do it. Maybe they should do it later. We don't know. Like that's that's a that's a a healthy question to ask, at least in terms of development. 
Uh, I know that a lot of people have been asking for more clans to have more options of playing. I know that a lot of people have been asking for Malkadian, Tremere. Uh, some people have been asking for Gangrel, even though Gangrel, we know that's going to take a little bit more work to get that happening. We've already discussed that. Um, so yeah, uh, is there going to be, in terms of story, is there going to be like some backlash uh, some backlash that's gonna happen against Kirill. Like, will a new clan do something like this? Like, would would come would come in and go like, okay, Kirill, you've been in charge. We're stepping in. Things are going to change now. Maybe we don't know. Um, also, another possibility is that maybe the maybe the retribution was indeed Kirill's, and then. It's going to be season two is all going to be like entity focused. Like maybe we're going to uh, maybe entity are going to deploy inside the city. Uh, some people have been asking for uh, deployable entities. Like it's been interesting this season that you have a few like solo entity um, NPCs that where there's a spot where there's a group, sometimes there's one a sole entity that's been patrolling the area uh, that's been adding a little bit of unexpected uh, unexpected fun I personally like the entity a lot maybe those groups aren't going to be stable anymore maybe they're going to start walking at the city so you're going to have to look at your map recently to see the entity symbols moving across the map that could be another thing that could be another level of Maybe it could be like a, 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 a one of those randomized cards that you have in solo blood hunt mode. We don't know. Um, uh, I don't know if the if there could be another like type of second acquisition NPCs inside the game. I think that's like already what we have is enough with the number of entities and the way that they're placed strategically placed around the around the the city. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. If it's like, um, yeah, maybe it's going to be Omnis that decides to, um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was going to say, like, maybe it's Omnis that's going to, to decide, like, hey, I'm, I'm like, this is the season of Nosferatu. Um, we're not going to get another clan, but Omnis decides to, like, send you on some sneaky, um, uh, some sneaky missions to find out some things and maybe it's going to uh, we're going to find some things to use against Kirill to tell him to calm, calm the F down uh, uh, both Omnis and Maya have been in incredibly passive uh, in, in, in some um, Yes, yes, I know, I know, Cthulhu, that <laughs> he, uh, apparently, he, um, Omnis doesn't like, uh, doesn't like Kirill's, uh, banging and sounds and, uh, his crew being loud, but at the same time, he likes Maya's music because it gets, it's extremely boring and repetitive because she listens to electronic music. And he says, I like this because I can space out and think more. It helps me focus because it's repetitive. Um, I, I, I can guess that for sure, like, Maya's not going to get a lot of development except for her club. Like, Club Maya, Club Toreador, is probably going to be the next step for her, I believe. Um, um, th there's also the political fact that maybe don't maybe some people don't want to do moves unless they're uh, unless they're comfortable of doing moves because they like their place in power uh, I know that Costos has been saying a lot in his dialogue that he doesn't want to say anything because he wants to remain keeper uh, and keeper is not just keeper of Elysium it's like keeper of the peace inside of the place and he likes to be in this kind of like position where he can talk to the primogen and make a balance in between them i don't know but this is like a, a for like a lot of this stuff though that's related to the story uh i understand that it may not be everyone's cup of tea it may not be um the 
most interesting thing because like some people have said about Solon's tweet about the story like what there's a story like I like to I like the battle royale shooty shooty thing with the vampires but the fact is if you want to know what's going to happen in the next seasons and the quests and 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 like basically the thematic like the the added layer that the that they're going to put on for seasons you have to pay attention to those things you have to pay attention to the story and everything um yeah um so i don't know i don't know it's it's things that we have to we have to consider and maybe we can guess a little bit more what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, more to discover, exactly. Uh, so we don't know. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I would like to have some news about that from Blood Hunt, uh, about what's going to happen for their plan. Not a lot of days before the season ends, so they're going to have to give us information about this uh the earlier the better i think for the health of everyone uh before people start panicking i seem to be like and that other person that i've seen i've uh, shown the tweet earlier i like we seem to be the only two people that have in the community that are just kind of like wait a second wait a second the, the timer's going down what's going to happen when the timer reaches zero like like to know um yeah so that's been i'm sorry this has been we've been going like a little bit over an hour like almost an hour and a half um but yeah uh sorry it's been a little bit rambly here for the last little bit parts but i hope at least i gave the news about everything to everyone in a clear and understandable way as much as possible um and yeah, my tech is going to be better. My skills with OBS are going to be better, hopefully. And uh, we are going to be, I don't know, if is there is there an interest still in me keeping up those Blunt Hunt news? I know I'm going to do them for myself, but, you know, are there people that are actually interested? I know, Cthulhu, you're definitely interested to hear, <laughs> to hear about news. Uh, uh, about Blood Hunt, but uh, uh, yeah, I feel like there's there's currently lacking some any, some people or some direct source that can give us like all those juicy tidbits and put them into context uh, put them all together uh, not everything being knee jerk reactions just like put everything together let it stew a little bit make sure that it, it like everything fits in into a narrative that makes sense it's not just like Blood Hunt decided to tweet this and then the next day decided to change for no apparent reason uh, so I know that some people still feel like you know only half read Blood Hunt's tweets and think that because they're not saying the news every day that they're patching the game and fixing the game that it means that nothing is happening uh I will agree that sometimes the silence is deafening, um, but I hope that they are uh, going to give us some more news soon about what is uh, what is about to come. So, after this very long rambling, just want to say thank you for all the people that have been here. Uh, I think I'm going to try to upload these on YouTube because I need to put those somewhere, I guess. Uh, just in case some people are interested about this and we're going to see if I'm going to get copyright stricken. But anyways, um, I think that weekends are a big, uh, are a good time for me to continue doing these news updates. I think I'm going to continue doing that. Um, we're going to see if you have any interests, you know, give, give, um, Give give this thing give this thing this thing a follow or give me a like on my news posts on the uh, at least my post of the of the stream on my Twitter uh, just you know just a little a, a little encouragement to know that I'm not the only one I'm not just doing this for me and Cthulhu here uh, <laughs> that's kind of weird saying like I'm doing this for Cthulhu 
Okay. Uh, but <laughs> I'm doing this for the Dark Lord. He's gonna show up like in the game at some point. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I hope you're having a good week, uh, hoping that uh, we're going to get some more news soon. There doesn't seem to be any lack of news. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.